Hi everybody, this is Caroline Sotheby and welcome to Up, Down and Around Town on the Road. As you can tell, uh, we had the uh, uh, cable closed for the three weeks. So uh, being that we're wind up cable personnel, we figured if uh, as long as we can get on the road with the little uh, inventory and, and interviews and whatever information give you, it might take care of that little uh, lull you have as you have to sit at home and watch something. Well, hey, watch us. Anyway, as you can tell, <clears throat> we have um, picture Pete Rose on the computer right now. We had, um, well, actually, Rich is the one that talked to him a couple months ago and got this interview and sort of put it in the can for a while, but this is a good time to bring it out because it'll flow with a couple of our interviews for the rest of the show. It's Pete, you know he's been in the business for a long time and he sort of gives an idea of what it takes to be in that position. People can't do a business if they aren't passionate about it. There's no way that you can overcome all of the obstacles against you if you're not really focused on it. You really love it. This is something that turns you on. Uh, that makes you feel happy to do it. It's not work. It's actually something that gives you great pleasure. Um, there's an awful lot of businesses that start up as hobbies and they develop from there. They aren't like you set out to do it initially. They grow from being a hobby and a passion into a full-fledged business. And I think anyone that, would, that has turned it into a full-fledged business would agree that it was a lot harder than they thought it was going to be. It requires a lot more time and mental space. You know, I go on little trips, road trips on the weekend with my wife, Janelle, down at Willow Tree, and we are constantly seeking excellence in retail. It's not just retail. We're looking for the way the cities themselves look, but truly, when we find stores that are doing it right and we walk in there, inevitably, we get charged up by the people who run these places, whose idea it was. You can see their personality in these stores and how they function. So I guess what I, <laughs> if I'm going to give advice to somebody to do it, um, I'm going to tell you that it will stay a hobby. You don't make the mistake of biting off more than you can chew if you're, if you're not ready to take it from being a, a hobby to a business you start incurring additional costs like rent. If you're gonna take a storefront, don't approach it like a hobby. If you're going to take on monthly rent, now you're gonna need people to open and close it. You're going to have expenses. You're gonna have all the utilities involved, everything that co comes along with running a business. And if you do that on a shoestring, if you do that thinking that miraculously it's going to be a spectacular home run, you may be right. You may just be lucky and hit that home run but odds are much more likely that it's going to be a steady a slog. It's going to take a while to build that momentum. So I advise that you, whatever you hope to do in volume, try cutting it in half by 50% for your planning purposes. Be very, very cautious about what you commit because those commitments, whatever you're going to do, Depends, you know, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're an artisan, if you're making things with your own hands, you're not likely to buy to make thousands of them. You're going to make a few and hopefully sell them. So running a business is uh, it's just this huge scale from A to B, I mean A to Z, uh, all different kinds of businesses. This is a clothing store. There's so many units in here, so many things in this store. If I was starting out right now, it would be much smaller. It would not start off this way. It's become this over three generations, since 1943. <clears throat> so to, and I didn't launch it, by the way. I did not establish this, so I feel like I am telling people how to do something when I haven't really done exactly that. I, I can see what these steps are, though. And I have seen many stores open and close because they did not plan properly. So you have to be a combination of offensive, meaning uh, having the daring do to do it, 
and then defensive as okay so what if what what happens on the downside here how do i protect myself from going out of business because i can't pay the bills so i guess that's what i'm talking about i, I guess i would to answer the question it's hard to summarize in in a simple uh paragraph uh it requires ambition it requires caution uh business practices uh and entrepreneurialism the two of them combined is really what it makes what makes a business work okay we listened to pete we got some information and we looked down biddle avenue and found a couple businesses that just opened within an hour, oh maybe a month and a half two months ago how are they surviving because of the pandemic now the closure uh, it was interesting because we knew especially this these two people in particular for a while and this one Cheryl Zemke has been pretty active she was doing her business from her own home uh, she was active with the DCA she made quite a few of the exhibits she even at one time in Christmas decorated the uh, DCA building uh, she's been in this all the time and finally an opportunity came up and she and her husband actually went in decorated the place so we're going to go to cheryl because not only has she had her boutique shop taken care of she took over the space on the other side and has something by the name of self-evident exhibit so let's go to cheryl now that we're with cheryl zepke hey i'm glad you uh, asked us to come down we were anxious to see what you have and we took a little peek beforehand mm -hmm. beautiful thing that you you guys worked your butts off didn't you yes <laughs> yes yeah my my poor husband worked really really hard around here <laughs> you can did see. a lot of remodeling a lot of uh, cleaning up and making it look uh you know, like a boutique yeah. so a lot of building fixtures and replacing carpeting and painting so I'm really happy with uh, the, the boutique and I'm also really excited to be here in Wind Up finally. <laughs> For some people that has, haven't been down to uh, you know department, I always want to say DAC and it's DCA, right? Right. And you've had displays, you've even mm -hmm. made Christmas decorations out there for, for yeah. the building and that. Yeah. Um, how long have you been in this type of world anyway? So I have been in business. Um, I've worked out of my home for the last 18 years doing all kinds of sewing and alterations, custom jobs, and, and then it's developed into artwork. But my whole concept is to blend fashion and art together. So I put a lot of artistic things into my fashion. Mm -hmm. And then my, fa oh, then my art is very fashion oriented. So it kind of crosses back and forth. Okay. So I have worked with the DCA probably for the last five or seven years. But um, now I'm here in the boutique. Yeah, on your own. yeah you Cheryl's own boutique. Museum. <laughs> yeah, so I'm located right next to between the vape store, Breathe a Vape Store, and Chelsea's on Biddle two nine three eight. Um, and uh, this is my suite that we're in, a suite number four, which is kind of <laughs> catchy. <laughs> I'm thinking like the Coco Chanel kind of thing, where she had a small little building that she started at. And, this is me. After 18 years, I finally get a building. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. And with this, though, like we had mentioned, mm -hmm. it's an unusual time because it's pandemic here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I got my mask here. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so we have a lot of things going outside, and hopefully you're going to be okay to start this um, business mm -hmm. and flourish for years to I'm come. hoping so. I have been re very well supported by a lot of my clients that I've built up through the last 18 years okay. and they're coming in and we're doing, you know, we have the six feet apart, we have masks required, you know, I'm cleaning the store often, I'm doing everything that I'm being asked to do, mm -hmm. uh, space out my clients. And uh, There's a long ha hallway you probably saw at the intro, so we've got markings all along the floor because I'm only allowed to have so many people within this space mm -hmm. so we're doing everything that we have to but thank goodness for my clients because they keep it going they're coming down into why not to not only see me but going and visiting the other shops as well okay 
one thing for a fact, you have scarves there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd like to give us a, an idea yeah. what you really have Yeah, so, so I have a lot of handmade items, so I make everything, everything that you see within the store walls that I have, the boutique walls, are all handmade items. So they're either made by myself or they're made by another local artist. Okay. So all the fashion I make myself, like the jacket back here, um, <laughs> I made for our, a client, um, all the things on the walls, uh, the art on the walls. Um, I have a Petoskey stone jewelry from Petoskey Bling. That is, um, she's a Livonia based artist. Uh -huh. So she finds the stones, she cuts them, Ooh. she grinds them down, she has a high polish. Um, her polish lasts forever, so it's not like a tumbling system. Right. It is actually highly polished. I have some beautiful soaps that you're probably not going to see on camera, but right behind uh, Caroline is a bunch of artisan soaps that are amazing scents, like coffee flavor, and uh, there's a tie-dye one that's very good. <laughs> it's got some um, charcoal stuff in there, some hemp, um, all different kinds of things that are very good for you and uh, very artistic at the same time. They're beautiful soaps. Um, the hand painted silks I have and in the hallway right outside of where we're standing is a hallway and uh, I was attracted to that I call it my art way so I installed an art track along that that so it's a whole display wall of art so by myself and you know eventually I'll have some other artists inside the boutique as well that's great yeah okay you got some stories behind yes yes so right here I have, um, these are slightly different. One is for kids that are, you know, young kids and one is for teens. It's called my Emerging Artists okay. um, so, uh, program. So what is inside of here is um, some basic newsprint sketching paper, some quality, uh, a little bit more better quality fa uh, paper. There's some coloring sheets or doodling sheets, either colored pencils or crayons, depending on, on the bags. And basically it's just um, to start them off um, on the path of being an artist if they're not already. Uh -huh. Just I, I didn't grow up having a lot of art supplies and I wanna foster that within children. So these are free, so it's every month uh, um, a child can come in up to 17, pick up a bag, go home, make something, a little piece of art, bring it back to me, and once a month I'll pick up a prize. Really? For, yes, yeah. yeah. I've already had uh, a little boy by the name of Connor, seven years old, did it last, last month, and I gave him a big basket of art supplies, and he was so excited to to hey, win, yeah. They need something like that. Yeah, yeah they, they love get, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially with staying at home right. and uh, right. no school anymore, right. which is virtual, yeah. So one of the other things I got going on, I'm working with, an, um, what is there, six of us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven local shops. Um, we have this passport that you can stop by any of our, our stores, um, shop small, win big. And we've each donated items into a large basket. So you visit each of these shops and have us pa uh, mark the passport. Mm -hmm. And then you turn it into one of the shops at the end of, I think you have until from November 27th to December 6th. So we gave you a little time to shop all the stores. Okay. You don't have to buy anything. I mean, if you buy it, then we'd love that. But, you know, just visit the store and then turn this in and then you can win a prize. Okay. So I've got Abundant Living, My Boutique, a Glowfish, La, La Viva and Rose. Is that how you said it? <laughs> River's Edge Gallery, Ashlan Mishna, Misha, and Up and Downs. Okay. Yeah. So we'll look into that too, of course. Yeah. We've got a picture so, of that. Yeah. Of course, you've got to give us a story about the building, right? Yes, because I was in <laughs> architecture for a very long time, so I'm very infatuated by all types of architecture, the aesthetics, and what the building's use was. And back, um, you know, uh, let's see, 1934 to 1956, um, this building and the one next to me, which is behind me, was the Rialto Theater. 
and that just fascinates me and I called the Bacon Library and the historian got me photos of the actual marquee in front and then she also got me a photo of the whole entire strip. Beautiful. Yes, it was an amazing photo which I want to uh, place in the hallway. I'll get some copies and place in the hallway so uh -huh. people can see that. And also um, a program, an actual program. Okay. So the Bacon Library had that. So I was inspired by that. So I um, am starting this new program. It's called, it's a, um, it's going to be in a popcorn bag because of the theater. Right. So inside the popcorn bag, you're go going to get these postcards that I made up of the actual R Rialto. Then a piece of art of some sort of uh, these ones. This one is a fashion art block and all of them are numbered. So um, a note to it is going to be alike. And I'm going to have these in a bag and you can purchase kind of like a, a, a little piece of art. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, so it can be really fun. All right. Okay, in order for them to come see you now, what are the times? Yeah, so I am normally open on, 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 on normal uh, uh, times, uh, 11.30 to 6, Monday through Saturday. I'm closed on Sunday. Okay. So, but for the holiday, for um, Thanksgiving, on Friday, I'm going to be open 11 to 7, Saturday, 9 to 8, and then Sunday, 12 to 4. So then we can space out all the shopping and, okay. you know, right. for, for our small business Saturday and Black Friday. Okay. Yeah. Telephone number, one. 734-740-1292. And I just want to say one more thing. Besides shopping in the boutique, I do all kinds of sewing and alterations and custom work. So if you have something like that, brides or going to a special event or just something doesn't fit properly, I'm here. I'm, I'm still doing that. Hey. Hi, this is the self-evident um, uh, art exhibit and it is running at Cheryl Zemke Boutique until December 26th. For this um, exhibit, we I have asked I have asked four different artists and then myself to respond on what they feel is the idea of what is real. So in this crazy age of COVID, we're just kind of exploring what each person means for that. So I have um, four different artists besides myself, Mary Jo Kuruana. Um, she does floral photography. Um, Sylvia Bandike uh, does a lot of different photo collages. Edward Vaughn, he does a lot of illusional art. And then we have one other artist and we have her with us today, which is Amanda Koss. I am an abstract intuitive artist. I am from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Um, I started painting because I needed a release, like a mental release from um, health conditions I was going through, as well as depression and anxiety and it manifested into something that I never expected it to become. Um, now I'm in galleries and I'm just going with the flow and letting life guide me. Okay, as we went out the door from Cheryl's and looked across the street, the open sign, the red light was going on at traffic jam. He says, hey, we got a little time. Let's go in there and say hello. And I'm glad we did, because we had a chance to see um, our usual gal. Even made a mention that, hey, a couple of weeks from now, can we at least get a fashion show from your place? And she said, wow, sounds good. So that's food for thought. But she left us with a message to give to you for something that's coming up soon. Hi, I'm Michaela from Traffic Jam Boutique. Back, thanks for stopping in here today. We're so excited for this upcoming weekend, Small Business Saturday. We will be open from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. that day with lots of great deals. We are running a BOGO sale. It's buy one, get one 50% off everything in the store. We have all this incredible new merchandise, beautiful selection, so come see us. We're also going to do first time ever 40% off our prom merchandise. We have a lot of current styles from anywhere from triple zero to 32. So if you're looking for a prom dress or just want to save it, come on down and do your shopping Small Business Saturday. In addition to that, we're also doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Make sure you come down, 
Shop local, Trappy Jam Boutique. We'll see you then. As long as we're on this idea of new businesses, like I had talked to you before, we had Cheryl B. Also, there's another one that came in, and that is H2O Seafood, right across from the City Hall. And you probably will know the chef and part owner, David Wood. He had been at the, the Bistro, also went, and I think the place was in Ellen Park, got that sort of... Uh, situated. Now he finally is in Wyandotte back again and he well we'll have to talk to him because we got to find out why he came back and has a seafood place. Right now we're here at H2O Seafood talking to chef and owner. Operator, hey. partner. Partner? Yeah myself and Alfred so we came together with this concept. Okay. So he's still involved, but uh, things have been excellent uh, until the shutdown. But why not? It's such a good community. It's really come around us okay. and really rose to help us keep our carryout business is doing great. So we're very uh, honored to have that. Okay, okay. what's your specialist? Well, we're so sourcing fresh seafood from all over. So most of it I'm getting overnighted. Fresh salmon. Uh, Chilean sea bass has been a hot seller. We also have a smoker here, so we've been smoking our own fish. We have what's called a secutery, secutery tray. So we're putting smoked salmon, white fish, uh, we're making all our own sauces, uh, fermenting our own olives, just having fun. It's really a cool place. We're enjoying it. The, the guests have perceived us amazingly. So really couldn't be doing much better. Okay, you just started in October. Correct. So getting your foothold now at this pandemic time is uh, really something to even get a business, first of all, during this year, mm -hmm. to start it up and hopefully have people come through the doors. And of course, now we got the three week uh, shutdown, so to speak. Are you still getting a lot of uh, carryouts? We are. We are doing a lot of carryouts. Let's wind out, Corzeal, uh, Trenton, they really rose up and helped us. Uh, our carryout business is almost more than half of what we would normally do. So especially on Friday, Saturday nights, we just, we might even be looking at it. If, it, if this should go longer, we'll be looking at the delivery services. Oh yeah? Ourselves, you know, so. Just with that said, uh, yeah, we, we line up out the door on Friday for carryout, so. People waiting in their cars, definitely less. Hey. Less. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> I gotta ask though, because for some people that said, I saw that face before, you were at Bistro. Correct. I uh, was one of the people, I was a chef at Wyandotte Bistro. I've been at Wyandotte for about six years now. I also helped launch a place in Taylor called Salute. So I've been around, I've been doing this my whole life. It's uh, all I know food, food and beverage. And you learn more and more ideas as you went from one to another to yeah, just, just like anything you practice, you get better with your craft. You surround yourself by good people. You're all learning together. You're all growing. Most of the people on the staff have worked with me for five plus years. Some of them ten. So uh, once you create that family, you're constantly growing and you're constantly learning together. You're evolving at all times. I know you always like to make soup. I love to make soup. And you like desserts. <laughs> <laughs> you know me well. Kind of known for uh, cakes and desserts. And, um, I've been making all, we were actually made a seafood chili. Really? A little, little, little different, but people really loved it. Uh, it was perceived, I was selling buckets to go. People are still calling to see if I had it down. I just made a batch of chowder, so we're getting into the heartier soups. Uh, but I'm constantly, and I do a lot of vegetarian stuff, you know that yeah. as well. So, I mean, I love my proteins, but I love my vegetables. And we're sourcing a lot of local vegetables as well, too. Stuff that are grown in Eastern Market, stuff from Ann Arbor, deal with a couple small farmers for different microgreens. They're really blessed to get the best product available. So, For some of these people that have no idea where this place is? Right across from City Hall. I mean, we're, just, <laughs> we're looking at it right now. We're right off Eureka and Biddle, um, first block. Three two or three two three three middle, so um, right next to Gizmos. It used to be this used to be old the old Alby's barbecue. So. And what are your 
your hours? Hours right now for COVID, we're running three to nine, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Um, but if we try to do Sunday, it didn't work out for us. Um, I don't know if it was the weather. We're going to give it one more Sunday shot, but I got a feeling we're going to. For now, we're going to end up doing Tuesday through Saturday, three to nine. And uh, if they want to call something, you you have many of you, but you also yeah. have it on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's our cater. We because of COVID, we kind of shortened some of the things. Uh -huh. We made a smaller menu, but our menu is on there with our phone number, everything. And a lot of people have been just ordering through their Facebook Messenger and what they want. So however you want to do it, we don't care. You can call us. We can just come on. Yeah, exactly. And that's what people were doing. They were cutting, let us get a menu. They'd sit in their car. We'd hustle it out for them as fast as possible and uh -huh. run it out. The girls have been very good, and people have been very gracious to all my girls, my wait staff. Uh, the waitresses are doing great, so we want to keep people making an honest living. Uh, it's hard right now. You know, all these people that work here just came off of unemployment to get shut down two and a half weeks later. So it's kind of a it's a rough scenario for people. So we want to make sure our people are taken care of and we're putting our best foot forward. We have uh, the hope that this pandemic crisis goes and you're going to be here for a length of time. Yes, definitely. And uh, something different. Yeah, something. And I, it's, it's funny to me that the Down River never really had a seafood-driven restaurant. I mean, there's been everybody has seafood, but you know we're bringing in Chilean sea bass fresh, and you can see on our Facebook, I'm holding a 30-pound piece of fish that's solid. I'm buying the whole fish myself, doing all the butchery. Uh, we're cleaning everything. I got a whole salmon in the house right now, head on, tail on. Beautiful. I mean, it's. You go see that. I, I'll bring it up to you <laughs> if you want. Let me go grab it. Okay. Hey, by the way, uh, we can always do that on the B-roll. Okay. That'd be interesting. You got to make sure you're here for a length of time and keep us posted on if you have any specials um, and changing of uh, the hours after right. a while. Well, if this ends, we'll go back to our normal hours. If, if you know, we got to follow the law, so we don't want any problems. Thank you, look. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy and Thanksgiving to you as Christmas well. Christmas to you too. Happy Christmas to you as well. <laughs> Thank you. We're in that situation now. We're waiting it out for three weeks, and hopefully, it will end at that point. But we never know, right? We have other things planned for next week. Um, I had a response from um, Maria Sutka. There's something that's going to be at the school free on December 10th and there will be speakers there. We'll get more information from her for next week. We also know that um, if there would have been a parade, um, our fire department would have been the Grand Marshals. Also, we probably have to find out where the Santa mailbox is going to be. And uh, that's just a couple of the things that are going to be planned for next week. Anyway, I'm glad you had a chance to uh, sit there, give an idea what's new in town. When it came to looking at restaurants, I got a whole list of them. Did you know that we have 23, possibly 24, 25 restaurants, bars in town? So we have to find out how many are having a takeout service. I know none of us is one for sure. Uh, but that's the only one because we didn't get a chance to see if Joe's Hamburger and in our usual But I'm sure if you have the telephone numbers of the individual stores you can call and like the people advise please Shop local keep them going so that they don't go out of business. We got a couple new businesses and I just thought of some some other one, but hey, that's gonna have to be for another show anyway, take care We'll see you next time on another program of Up, Down, and Around Town. Take care now. Bye-bye.